From the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio, this is Injury Insider with Derek Hayes. Injured in Georgia? Make the right call to the law office of Derek M. Hayes at 404-777-HURT. Injury Insider is presented by Status Home Design, your one-stop shop for all your home and gift needs. Hello and welcome to Injury Insider with Derek Hayes on Business Radio X. We are broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio in the Senesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel. This show will answer legal questions and debunk personal injury myths with insight and expertise. For nearly 25 years, Derek Hayes has exclusively represented injured parties in Georgia. Now he'd like to put that knowledge to work for you. My name is Lita Brooks and it's my pleasure to introduce the star of the show, Oh, Derek Hayes. Hey, hey. Good I, afternoon. I just noticed something, though. You say nearly 25 years. I hit that 25-year mark. This year? Yeah. So this year is the 25th year. 2020 or 2021? 2021. Yay. Okay. All right. So well, I'm going to take the word nearly, nearly out of so there. So for 25 years. Wow. There we go. Okay. And the podcast is coming up on the one-year anniversary. Yes, it right? is. So the nearly was relevant. Right, right. Back right. when this exactly. was written. <laughs> exactly. That was your intro. Okay. Well, excellent. Before we begin, a quick reminder that Injury Insider is brought to you by Status Home Design, your one-stop shop for all your home and gift needs, and by the law office of Derek M. Hayes. Injured in Georgia, make the right call to the law office of Derek M. Hayes at 404-777 Hurt. That's quite a car crash. Yeah, yeah. I think it got worse. <laughs> Have a little ending it's on it. 2020, <laughs> it's carrying over to 2021. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh. All right. I'm sure we have a great show today because yeah, they we do. always are. So we, I have some numbers. Okay. I have your download number. Okay. Not even certain if you know it, but I was just, okay, so today is the first show of 2021. So even if someone, if you're listening to this in may or june uh we are taping now in january mm -hmm. uh, again this is the first show of 2021 and you are over 1.7 million downloads for the injury insider podcast yeah that should I'm have do another sound applause yeah. yeah there it is there it is thank you mike yeah that's great i'm thrilled and, yeah. and i'm amazed i well, mean that's i don't know 1.7 million people no, and you don't have to. All you have to do is give your expertise on this microphone, and they are amazing producers that are here. They push it out to the world. Um, at the end of the show, of course, we'll tell everybody how they can find you, submit questions. This is an interactive podcast. If you guys uh, have something that we say sparks a question or even more, if you have a case, if you've been injured and you'd like to talk to Derek about representation, uh, he is easy to find with all his social media profiles. Unless all 1.7 million people call me at the same time. That's okay. <laughs> it'll be a long you'll need, day. You'll need a few more paralegals, right? A very right? long day, correct. But oh, that's fine. Well, I know how much you enjoy doing this show, and I feel like I could go ahead and take the bar exam with what I've learned. I say it every week. Well, I think you're brilliant every, anyway. Oh, but. stop. Not in the legal world. I may be brilliant at what I do, and I have a whole separate career, but... Um, this this is something else. So, I mean, should we tell? What if someone's listening to this for the first time? Should sure. we explain our dynamic? Sure, absolutely. Go ahead. You are my boss. Exactly. <laughs> this is go. how it works. So. <laughs> <laughs> that, and, and I say one other thing to her all the time, and that's yes, dear, yes. because we are a couple. Exactly. So she we is the couple. boss, and my response is typically yes, dear. There you go. You did refer to me as boss a little while ago, before we were even on air. Well, that's yeah. because you, you are. I know my place. <laughs> now, in my you. office, it's a different yeah. dynamic. I'm not in you the You don't office. work there, so no, yes, no, no. I, I truly I feel not. like I am boss there. No. What do I do? You want to tell everyone? Give me a little plug yes, here as the, yes. as the host. So, I'm, Lita is amazing. Uh, I'll start with that. No, she, that's not what I meant. Well, she owns multiple companies. She has a podcast called Status Life with Lita, which I'm honored to host that for her. Uh, she also has a uh, online store called The Status Market. She has an a in-person store, or what do you call it, brick-and-mortar mm -hmm. store brick called The, mortar, the sure. Stat Status Home Design. She owns an interior design company. She's an interior designer by trade. Uh, just I can go on and on and on and on. She writes an incredible blog. But Status Life with Lita, look that up. That's an incredible podcast. You learn a lot. I've learned a lot. She talks about learning during my podcast. Well, I think I've learned just as much during hers. I think you have. And if you are listening to this and you're following Derek and you're listening to The Injury Insider, not 
I'm, I'm not giving this as a plug for me, but Derek is phenomenal on my show, and he really has to sit in the hot seat a lot. Uh, yes, my, I do. My podcast, uh, as an interior designer, I am a lifestyle blogger, so we talk about everything. We talk about fitness and nutrition, uh, weight loss, decorating, um, Gosh, I'm thinking the, list the, is the long. purging. We did yes. a two-part series on purging and decluttering. And the <laughs> reason why we did that, Poor we bought Derek. a house together and yes. we're moving in. We're and moving. And we've, we're, the transition yes. is going on. We're doing all kinds of rehab work at the well, home. We're so. blending our families. Yes, we're blending. So we're selling the home you've been in. Yes. For 15, 15 years, and, yeah, and that 15 really and sparked years. the purging and decluttering. We brought in yes, a psychologist. So if you want to hear Derek on maybe a more personal level, on this show, you're getting his expertise, you're getting his education, and you're getting his knowledge about the law. But on Status Life with Lita, you get to learn a lot more about Derek on a personal <laughs> level, and it's fun. And he gets really squirrely sometimes because he doesn't like to be put in the hot seat. He would he would rather talk about what he knows about, which is right here at the Injury Insider. Well, I was thinking about it. You have yet to have a male guest on your show that's right well I'm, so i've I'm, been the guy I, have, I don't yeah i don't know why right. I, I don't know why I, I should find i don't know so, I'll think of something give me a topic and <laughs> fitness going to bodybuilding i don't know you are the male guest every week yes and so, guinea pig and everything else yeah i just happen to have had a lot of females yes so you've had another female on the mm-hmm. show we I had have. nisa green yes a um, former client and mm-hmm. a very good friend and someone that you knew outside of yeah. you and me yeah um, that was the small world connection yeah, but absolutely. you've got some other fantastic guests yeah i do have some guests for coming 2021 correct so, yeah. and i'm not going to go into that right now right. but i do have some incredible guest guys that i've known for many many years ladies and men that will discuss different aspects of personal injury law and and litigation and what we call alternative dispute resolution, mediations, arbitrations, those kind of things. Now, if you're thinking that doesn't sound interesting, it always is. It is. It really is. Derek puts a spin on all of this. Right. You're going to learn a lot. And um, I can't wait. It's going to be a fantastic year. And I believe in February, we're going to do this show with Champagne because that'll be our year anniversary. Oh, cool. Not as a couple, but as a show. I'll have to be here that day. Our anniversary. (laughs) Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get into today's show. Okay. What do you think? All right. What do you have for us today? What's our topic? So today I do have a topic I'm going to get to, but really before I do that, I've had a lot of family members, friends, even neighbors reach out to me, uh, want to ask a question about okay. going into 2021. Um, so with that being said, the emails, the texts, the phone calls, and I kind of put this in quotation marks. I summarized their questions. Okay. It's, I was going to say, I don't have it usually. It's, right. It's 2021, okay. and I'm looking at my personal budget for the year. I'm trying to make some cuts where I can. What do you recommend I do for car insurance coverage this year? Mm. And they're calling a personal injury attorney because they know full well that we have to deal with all the different kinds of insurance company every day. Sure. So more often than not, they call me to ask, where can I make cuts? And some of the other questions are, do I need to purchase more coverage than the state requires? Uh, can I save some money by cutting back on my coverage? Uh, one said, I've been told that I should bump up my coverage when times are tough with the economy. And they want to know if that's true or not. Um, and then also, too, finally, is there a company that you recommend over others? Now, I'm going to go ahead and answer that one first. Okay. I don't endorse any car insurance company. I don't. I won't. Uh, I have to deal with all of them every day of my life. And when one seems a little easier to deal with than others at times, uh, it's kind of a roller coaster. That same company six months from now may be the worst one to deal with. They all go through their own highs and lows in, in handling claims and uh, so I can't and won't in- endorse any car insurance company. I will say you got to have it, but I'm not going to say one company over the other is better because that answer today is not going to be the same answer even a week from now. Okay. Well, I have to admit that I, I have some of those same questions. I've probably asked some. I bet yeah, some yeah, of this yeah. is, is me compiling well, and, and asking you these questions. Some of our mutual friends. Of course, of course. But I will say this. You said, um, I wonder why they're asking me as a personal injury attorney. You have opened yourself up. Everyone asks you everything. Yes. Right? Yes. I, yeah, and I'm on a, side, on a side note real quick. I, and I'm sure that different uh, careers deal with the same kind of thing. 
when a question starts with, I know you're not a bankruptcy attorney, right. but what do I do but, with this? Right. I know you're not a divorce attorney, but what do I do with this? I know you're not a criminal defense attorney, but what do I do with this? Sure. The answer is, I don't know. I, know. I took those classes in law school, but, yeah, but you I can help. direct really you to someone sweet. who we can help you. We even had a friend who asked you to look at their lease. Yeah. You know, yeah. everyone just wants, please help, please help, yeah. please help. And you give your time. I will. That's, you know, kudos to you because everyone that asks, you try your very best to at least guide them in the right direction, whether being another attorney, if that's what's needed in a different practice of law or if it's something you can do. So yeah, you're very fact, generous. Now that I think about it, we did have a question on a prior podcast that someone submitted about DUIs mm -hmm. and whether or not they have to submit to fill sobriety test. And I reached out to a good friend of mine I've known since college who does DUI defense and ultimately got an answer. And then we you know, provided that answer on the podcast. So again, any question you want to ask, Go ahead. If I don't know the answer because it's not the field of work that I'm involved in, then I will be happy to reach out to someone and, and get an answer. Well, it seems like cutting back on insurance may not be the best place to start. It, it's Is not. It? No, 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 it's it's not. Um, you know, I'd never recommend, and I'm going to say this, I'd never recommend in normal times that you, um, you cut back on car insurance. But as we well know, we're not experiencing what we would call normal times right now. Um, so my answer to this is kind of focused really on Georgia law uh, because it's where we are. So it may be a different answer in your state if you're not here in Georgia. So I'd definitely consult with someone there about specifics of your individual state. But I do encourage everyone to do their own research, basically, again, in their state as to what they should do. So that's what I would recommend at this point anyway. Okay. Well, you listed several questions. Do you want to answer them individually or just give an overall answer to the main question? I, I kind of think it's best to just do an overall uh, kind of a re-education because we've addressed this before in a prior podcast uh, as opposed to individual questions. So um, I'm just going to give you some quick points. Okay. Uh, let's start with the coverages and really definitions of the coverages. Liability. Liability coverage is the basic that you're required to carry, at least here in Georgia. Not every state's requir state requires liability coverage, but here in Georgia we do. And the minimum coverage is 25000 per person, 50000 per occurrence. Very simply, that means if you cause a wreck and you injure, say, 10 people on a bus, the most any one person on that bus can get is up to 25000 The most that would be paid for that entire wreck is a total of 50000 So if 10 people are badly hurt and the most the insurance company is going to pay is fifty grand, well, that doesn't work very well most of the time. Sure. So that's minimum coverage, and that's liability. Liability is coverage that takes care of someone else if you cause the wreck. Next is UM. UM stands for uninsured motorist. Now, uninsured motorist is coverage you have on your own personal policy that takes care of you and anyone in your vehicle if, if you're hit by someone who has no coverage at all. Um, so it happens, unfortunately, mm -hmm. more often than you would think that the person that caused a wreck has no coverage or if they flee the scene. You know, they run you off the road, they uh, you know, rear end you and take off. Well, sure. that becomes potentially a UM claim if you can't identify that person. Next is UIM. UIM stands for underinsured motorist. Now, underinsured motorist is a little bit different from UM in the sense that the person that caused the wreck does have liability coverage, but they don't have enough coverage. So back to the example of 25000 per person minimum, 50000 per occurrence. If you have, say, 100,000 medical bills and you've had multiple surgeries, well, that 25000 isn't going to be enough. So that's why underinsured motorist is extremely important. Now, very quickly, there are two kinds of UIM policy, policies. There's what we call uh, offset UIM, and there's what we call add-on UIM. Add-on's the easy one. That simply means you take the amount of UIM coverage you have, say, for example, 100000 per person, and you add that on top of the liability coverage. So if they only had 25000 and you have 100000 well, now you have up to 125000 of coverage with add-on. Offset means you take the amount of liability coverage, subtract it from the amount of UIM you've got, and you're entitled to the difference, up to the difference. So if you have 100000 they have 25000 Well, you take the twenty five away from 100 that means you have up to 75000 through your own underinsured policy. So add-on gives you up to 125000 where offset only gives you up to 100000 in that example. You follow me? I'm following. And what's very interesting 
I'm listening to you say all this. You have no notes on this. And I know you do this day in and day I, well, out. And it. an insurance agent would know this. But I'm thinking, oh, my God, you have all. I mean, this memorized. Right. You. This <laughs> well, is your work. But it's a common goodness, speech. I feel like I need to be taking notes or you're going to have to give me a written summary later. Yeah, well, we can. I'll do a, a test. It's a lot. I mean, this is a lot test. to know about the insurance. Yeah. And, and uh, the reality is we deal with all parts of insurance policies every day anyway. Right. And doing what I do. So, yeah, you have to know the knowledge. Now, there are all kinds of other little additional details that I really don't have time to go into that would take really a full podcast just to address all the what ifs with UM or UIM or liability. You know, it's a what if game. And I know we've covered some of these. Yeah, we have. And that's why that year, prior podcast. Right. This is just the, the synopsis. Right. Of go all back of through them. the podcast. Sure. I don't remember which one it was, but it's titled uh, something about it, what you need to know about purchasing insurance, something along those lines. But you'll get a greater definition of these terms in that podcast. Now, comprehensive is the next one I'm going to talk about. Mm-hmm. Comprehensive, we refer to usually as acts of God, fire, flood, hurricanes, tornadoes that destroy your car. That's about a property damage claim. Okay. So it's to take care of those kinds of things. Collision is you're parked in the, the front of your house on the road and overnight somebody flies by and they rear end your car and they take off. And you're not in the car, obviously, but collision would take care of your property damage because of that. Or you're in a parking lot at a grocery store or a mall and somebody bumps your car and they aren't nice enough to leave a note and they take off. Well, that's a collision claim. Next is med pay. It's also referred to as MPC or medical payment coverage. MedPay kind of acts like health insurance on your vehicle. So MedPay pays up to your MedPay limits of your medical bills. So if you have 5000 in MedPay, for example, then up to 5000 of your medical bills will be paid through your own policy. Now, the good news is we don't have to reimburse that. So ultimately, if you have 5000 of your medical bills paid by your own car insurance, then when the case settles, it's going to be $5,000 more in pocket for you. And as your attorney, I know exactly what needs to be done to perfect that and address it and make sure that that money doesn't go back to pay your car insurance company when you don't have to. So a lot of people, again, don't know that. Umbrella coverage, uh, just to touch on that, many professions will carry umbrella coverage. It's kind of a general liability policy, usually a million dollars or more, that uh, takes care of anything above and beyond what the liability limits may do. It's kind of a way to protect your own personal assets. Uh, And then towing and roadside assistance, I've talked about those before. I really don't see the need anymore for those if you have AAA, for example, or some, uh, if you lease a car, some leasing companies require to have uh, AAA or they have their own roadside assistance. You know, everybody talks about roadside assistance with your uh, car company now, your your lien holder for your, uh, your car payments. So you may or may not need to have that anymore. Now, next, I want to talk about statistics. Um, you know, statistically, there are more people that are uninsured during hard economic times because people do cut back on their car insurance. Okay. Uh, you know, we're neighbors to Florida, and I, yes. I always use Florida as an example because 25% of people in Florida are completely uninsured. Wow. That's crazy. That's a lot. That's 25%. Quarter so one of the four, state right, does one not have people. insurance. Now, that's the statistic we know. The reality is that those numbers are based on the number of uninsured motorist claims. So that means people that have been involved in wrecks, they've been able to measure the 25% were not insured. But that doesn't cover those that weren't in wrecks. So Could be a lot that higher. number yeah. it truly is a lot higher, I'm sure. Uh, you know, nationwide, it's 12% of people are uninsured. And Georgia's right on the, the, uh, the, the money on that. We're mm-hmm. 12% also. 12% of Georgia drivers are uninsured, again, based on the number of uninsured motorist claims. Um, you know, remember, too, that your insurance company is a business designed to make money. So they don't care about what you're – if you cause a wreck, they don't care about what you want to do. You know, I'm sorry, I hit somebody, it's my fault. You ask your insurance company to go ahead and pay the claim, they don't care. They're not going to listen to you. They're not going to take your input. Uh, so they rarely are concerned about what you say if you cause a wreck. They may deny a claim when you say, no, 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 it was my fault. But they're not going to listen to you. That's something people don't realize. No, I, and I wouldn't either. Oh, it's my insurance. They have my best interest at heart. They yeah, have well, their best interest correct. at heart. Correct. They're worth yeah. billions, billions, maybe even trillions of dollars, and they want to keep that money in their bank account, mm-hmm. not give it to somebody else. So, again, it's a business decision far too often that they make. Um, you know, when an attorney involved, that changes a little bit because they don't want to fight a battle that's going to cost them money and court cost and mm-hmm. uh, depositions and expert witness fees and those kind of things. When an attorney's involved, there's a real threat there. And so, again, it does help statistically. It shows that uh, people with an attorney receive a lot higher amount of money 
uh, more importantly, money in pocket because of an attorney being involved. Um, so they're not going to take you by the hand. They're not going to walk you through the process. They're not going to step by step t- tell you this is what you need to do now. This is what you need to do at this point to maximize your money. It's all about their bottom line, not yours. Uh, and again, I'll, I'll say this. I d- did do a full podcast about coverages. So I strongly encourage you to go back and listen. And if you still have questions, just call my office. I'll be happy to talk to you about it. I'll be happy to explain anything you know regarding your own car, your, your personal injury claim if you've been involved in a car wreck. Well, that's great information. And I encourage everyone to go back and listen to the prior podcast for more. Uh, 1.7 million people are listening. so That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Join them. And if you're not listening, maybe your neighbor is. That's right. And, and submit. Um, you know, that's... That makes this fun and it makes it interactive and and Derek is here for you guys. All right, let's get to the next topic. Elder abuse and nursing home neglect. You and I were talking about this before we even started today. It's a really sad situation and I don't think most people know how bad of an issue it can be. I know that you have been recognized as a top 25 nursing home abuse and neglect attorney in Georgia for several years. Yes. Correct. Yes, thank, what thank, an honor. Yeah, thank you. No, uh, I mean, I know that. And do you want to go into the conversation that you and I were having and, and sort of bring it to light here on the show? We can. We can. I, I would say that, um, you know, doing what I do, and, and I, I've had a personal experience with my, my mom, my own mom being in a nursing home. Um, it, it piqued my interest. There are a lot of things I learned visiting her, thankfully not to her, but things I learned being involved in, in the elder care. Um, you know, she had some dementia and ultimately Alzheimer's issues that, that led to her being in a nursing home. Well, what we were discussing was right now, January of 2021, COVID, the numbers are really amping up here in the South. I don't know where everyone is listening from, but here in Georgia, we're seeing a rise in the numbers. And with that being said, it makes it much more difficult for a family member to get inside a nursing home to check on their loved one. And I was just saying, how scary. Yeah. Um, you're yeah. going to go through, right, some of the points and, mm-hmm. and more of the law and the things that you know. But I was just speaking from a personal level. Um the things that are scary and the things that we need to watch out for for our loved ones is even harder to catch now because this COVID has put so much of a strain on being able to get into the nursing homes. That's it. And most states don't even allow visitors at all, period. None. Um, Georgia, there have been some modifications to that, but ultimately most states now, if you're not a, a patient, or an employee of a nursing home, you're not going to get in there. Wow, I didn't realize that. Yeah, and there's stories now, I've seen a few, just kind of on a side note, one where a, uh, a gentleman's wife was in a nursing home, and he sold his home, did everything he could so he could move into the nursing home. Uh, but she was in a different wing than he was, and eventually he was able to get himself moved into that wing to be reunited with his wife that he hadn't seen. I think it was like eight months, maybe. They had not seen each other. Aww. I saw another one where a uh, elderly lady's mo- uh, a daughter, um, I would assume the daughter was in her 40s or so, uh, maybe 50s. I saw the, the video of it. She uh, got herself employed at the nursing home just so she could be there to be with her mom. That's a great idea. Yeah. If you go in a nursing home, that's what I'll do. You get employed there? Yes, because I'm not certain, based on my age, that I would be quite old okay, enough to fine, live there. Fine. There's a teeny age gap between the two of us. So yeah. if you need a nursing home, I'll go work there. How about that? Oh, well, thank you. I will I be retired that. at that point, yeah, but well, right, the age gap right. is not that great. You know, but yeah. those are interesting stories. You know, the, the people that uh, unfortunately have someone in a nursing home right now that are desperate to see them, to check mm-hmm. on them, to be with them. You know, that husband and wife had been married for over 50 years, 60 years, whatever the number was. It was way up there. And, and he did everything he could to get moved into that nursing home, not realizing that he wasn't going to be on the same wing. And then he did everything he could to get on that wing with her. Um, which was great. I love it. That's a sweet story. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's start by talking about what to look for as a family member or friend of someone in a nursing home when you su- suspect abuse. All right, I'm going to start by referring to my my website. I have a, a, a blog entry that uh, was back in November of 2020 uh, titled Elder Abuse Has Many Forms. 
Um, the blog entries are a very quick read. They, they give you some bullet points, things to think about. Uh, and I want to pull some of the information I had from that. So there are various forms of elder abuse. Some can be more challenging to spot than others. I mean, that's just the reality of it. Uh, older people in nursing homes are vulnerable for a lot of reasons. Uh, one, I mean, think about these individual points. One is isolation. You know, they may not see anyone outside the care facility, especially now for weeks or months at a time. Uh, you know, their family may live far away, and they're not able to get there on vacation or on a trip specifically to see mom or dad, or they may make the trip, and then they can't get in to see them because of the shutdown. So those that's one of the first things to think about is, is isolation. It reduces all the opportunities for someone to discover abuse that they may not know about. Next, communication difficulties. And this is something I, again, personally dealt with uh, when someone has dementia or Alzheimer's. Uh, they will lose the eventual ability to even speak at all. But during that time, uh, you know, difficulties can be, um, they may not be believed because some of the things they say are so far-fetched. And my mom thought I was the neighborhood kid coming to visit her. She thought I was her brother. Um, she didn't recognize any of us for a long period of time. So when someone has dementia or Alzheimer's, there's a inability to communicate effectively based on the fact that they're kind of out in left field sometimes with what they say. Um, so elder abuse can happen many times because they don't either know how or no longer have the ability to communicate. Um, now, let's think about the different kinds of abuse. There's physical mm -hmm. abuse. That's one that a lot of people don't think happens, but it does. That can be hitting, slapping, pinching, kicking being handled very roughly by people that work there. And that's not always by just the people that work there. That can come from other patients, uh, physical abuse from other patients that uh, are allowed to wander the hallways when other patients oh, in that sure. area no, are better. right. I hadn't thought about that. I'm so, just thinking um, an employee. Yeah, and then a lot of people don't some, think about right, that. Right, to but someone who is staying there. Think about this fact, though. They're responsible for the care of those patients mm -hmm. and part of that means not only keeping them from the abuse of staff members but other patients so if there's a patient who's known to be very physically violent not intentionally because their mind has lost its ability to comprehend what they're doing but they're very physical and another patient in an adjacent room or down the hallway as i said may be bedridden and that patient's allowed to wander and they go into that room and they punch they kick they slap they hit whatever it may be well, your loved one may be very severely injured as a result of that. And the nursing home can be held responsible for what that patient did because that patient was not restrained properly or allowed to wander the hallways without supervision and do what he or she may have done. Um, so physical abuse, sexual abuse, and this is really sad. There is a significant portion of, sec, uh, of abuse that happens in nursing home homes that are s sexual in nature. Um, you know, again, people that are not allowed to, are not able to, incapable of defending themselves to stop the abuser. And when it does happen, they're too ashamed or too scared to say anything to anyone because they may be threatened by that person that just sexually abused them. Now, typically, statistically, that's shown to have happened from employees, but it can also happen from other patients. Mm -hmm. That's the same kind of thing that, uh, again, these nursing homes have to be uh, aware of and, and prevent. You know, think about financial abuse, where someone has access to uh, someone's checking account or savings account. And whether it's a personal care facility uh, that sends people out to the home and they take your parents' checkbook or your loved one's checkbook and write themselves checks or drain the ATM card, or in nursing homes, and it happens. Uh, there is a, um, a way to address that with with um, you know again the nursing home itself if there is financial abuse above and beyond the sexual and the physical it could possibly it's going to sound like theft but if it they is. had jewelry yeah. no i know i know what you were saying but i'm saying if they had physical possessions that were being removed to be sold right, for profit right. that would go under financial correct correct yeah. and I'll, I'll say this too uh, again kind of a personal story my mom uh, in her nursing home facility the first one she was in when she was still mobile it, it's kind of what happens unfortunately with alzheimer's she uh was still uh, able to walk the halls and she did and and they all had their individual rooms and she and other patients it wasn't just her 
they would get disoriented. They'd walk into the wrong room and they would open a closet and they would think it was their clothes and they'd change clothes and put on clothes that didn't belong to them. Not because they were stealing. Sure. They just didn't realize. They didn't realize what they were doing. I mean, it it, it was unfortunate, but it's kind of one of those things that happens. You know, think about emotional abuse. That's really a big one. Emotional abuse can be verbal, yelling, screaming, putting the fear of God in someone who's not able to take care of themselves. Um, Or actions that are designed to make someone feel alone Mm. or unloved. Nobody loves you. Nobody wants to come see you. You're here by yourself. I'm taking care of you. And there are things like that that truly do happen. I've I've heard the stories, and it's unfortunate, but verbal abuse, you know, that's one of those that can go unnoticed for a long time, Mm -hmm. months. Um, and, And again, the patient either may not be able to communicate to you, your loved one, or they're terrified. They're afraid to say anything to anyone because they think it may get worse. Now, neglect is different from abuse. Neglect means that since they're dependent upon the nursing home to provide their basic needs, food, clothing, shelter, those kinds of things, their medications, um, if they're unable to meet their needs, their own personal needs alone, they're dependent upon the staff. So think about, um, you know, food preparation, uh, being able to not only provide the food, but um, you know, sometimes patients don't know how to eat anymore. Right. They lose the ability to feed themselves. And, and on a quick note here, I'm going to plug your podcast again. Uh, we had your aunt on a podcast about her book. Mm-hmm. And I'll Stolen give her a plug. Cake. Stolen yes. Cake. It's a, an incredible book and a great podcast. That really was a phenomenal oh, show. Yeah, I'm not yeah, bragging yeah. on myself. That was a show. We were all in it and we had my aunt uh, virtually come into Correct. the show Oh, but the topic, it's every, I just keep going through that, everything that we talked about. Yeah, and it was about Alzheimer's and, and about mm-hmm. dealing, in, in her situation, dealing with taking care of her at home. But it's the stories that she tells that make you realize just how, uh, unfortunate, how unfortunately, how much a, a, an Alzheimer's or dementia patient depends upon everyone else to provide that care. And if that care is neglected, it can lead to very serious harm. Uh, but things you can do, and we'll talk more about this in a minute, but think about video con- conferencing, uh, FaceTime, Zoom, all those things that are available now to be able to speak to your loved one and, and more importantly, see your loved one face to face. If they don't have a cell phone and they're still able to use a cell phone, get them one, get them an iPhone so or you know, whatever, Android, whatever you want to do so that you can FaceTime with your loved one while they're in the nursing home and you can't visit them and see them. You may see some things that are triggers that make you think we need to look into what's going on with mom or dad or whomever it is. Well, all the whole list, everything you just went for, it just makes my heart break. And I'm sure everyone listening to this is probably thinking of their loved ones. We're all going into that state. Everyone is aging. We can't stop the process no matter how much we want to. Uh, And those are all terrible things to think about. But are some other things, what are some other things to look for when you talk about physical abuse and neglect? Well, I I do want to talk about one more blog. I have several about elder abuse and nursing home negligence and abuse. But I have another blog that was from January of this year, January 7th. That's kind of why the topic is here today. Um, It has to do with dehydration and malnutrition. So unfortunately, I get an awful lot of calls related to that. Um, dehydration, malnutrition, that's above and beyond the physical abuse, the bruises, the, the severe injuries because of uh, being handled improperly or aggressively or, or being attacked by an, another patient. Um, so think about this. In 2015, a study called Aging, Biology and Nutrition, Malnutrition in the Nursing Home, it reported that 20% Think about it. 20% of those in nursing homes have at least some form of malnutrition. That's scary. It is scary. That, that, that's bad. Now, there are some reasons why, natural reasons why, if you think about it, like I said earlier, they may not be able to feed themselves anymore. And, you know, again, I still blame the nursing home because I think it's the, the job and responsibility of the attendant to make sure that mom or dad or whomever it may be is eating. And if they're not, you help them, you assist them. Their body may not absorb the food the way it's supposed to anymore. You know, our bodies, as we age, things don't work the way they should. I'm thinking of a story. I just want to interject uh, because we brought up my aunt taking care of my grandmother who uh, fell, broke her hip. And she was told in the hospital that they didn't have the staff to sit and feed my grandmother. 
They so she they said yeah. if if a family member is not here, well, my grandmother had Alzheimer's, so a she didn't know how to feed herself, but b she's laying in a hospital bed just recovering from a fall, and that resulted in a surgery. We don't have the staff, and that wasn't neglect. Right. They were being very right. honest, but my aunt was floored, and she said, so she was spending twelve hours a day in the hospital next to my grandmother just to make sure she got nutrition and well, her meds and you know the other things but how awful oh it's terrible and, and you and i've had this conversation before I, I made it a daily routine because the nursing home was relatively close to my office to when i could take my lunch break to head over there and, and i would feed i would help i would feed my mom uh so my dad could take a nap for a little bit and i would sit there at the table and it was like you're feeding a, an infant um, you literally would have to, to, you know, sometimes play the, here comes a plane, you know, open up your mouth, let's, let's eat and, and remind her to chew and remind her to swallow it. It's, it can get to that extreme and it's, it's awful. I've got one more story. Cause I love the stories. I think that's what people hold on to. And my dad found himself in a rehabilitation center, uh, after a surgery as well. And he had kidney trouble. Uh, has since gotten one of mine, but at the time was on dialysis. And that's a different diet that they need to be aware of. This was a specific to a kidney diet. And I know I'm digressing here, but stay with me. Uh, (laughs) They would send trays every morning, right? You get your breakfast and your lunch and your dinner. And if my mom wasn't sitting there, nine times out of 10, the wrong tray was brought. They would send ham. You can't eat ham because it's too high in sodium. Yeah, and that's another example. And then she would send it back. All the Can't eat that, can't eat that, can't eat that. His tray would go to the wrong person. It would Mm -hmm. be the wrong diet. Um, and again, I'm, you know, not throwing in anyone under the bus. It was common. This was very, it was almost yes. daily. She would have to get there before his breakfast and sit there throughout the day to make sure the right diet had come because he needed a specific kidney diet for dialysis. I had a client, uh, not too long ago that had, had paid someone, um, an hourly wage to sit in the room with her, uh, mother at the nursing home to watch just to observe she wasn't able to yes. do it because she had her own job her husband yes. had a job so they hired someone to physically sit in the mother's nursing home room just to watch and they also too at nighttime they would take a uh, a video camera hidden in a teddy bear and put it on the counter or on the, on the dresser rather in the, in the uh, bedroom just to be able to video overnight to make sure nothing went wrong good for them but back to that study i do want to finish the thought on oh, that absolutely. so the study things were suggested like uh you know dietary supplements better food choices some of the nutritional drinks that they can have just to try and help and make sure they're getting the nutrients but here's another thing it's believed that around 75 percent of americans now this is not just people in nursing homes but 75 percent of americans uh are dehydrated now that's even higher in nursing homes because they can't hold a drink and, and pick it up and, and swallow. And so they, they're not able to go from a wheelchair into the kitchen and prepare a glass of water or whatever they may, may need to stay hydrated. So it can be prevented by a proper uh, care, by, uh, like you said, staffing. Those things that would make sure that, that uh, someone is getting the hydration they need as well as the nutrition they need. So malnutrition and dehydration are extremely um, unfortunately common in nursing homes. And, you know, it can lead to serious co- consequences, things like uh, sleeplessness, confusion, fainting, and all of that's going to deteriorate their health even quicker and ultimately lead to death. Urinary tract infections, Urinary tract which are infections. very common Correct. in elderly people, and they're not getting yeah. enough, yeah. and, you know, yeah, and all, tons of issues. And the bacteria that stays in the body with those kinds of things, it can be, and many times is, deadly. That's the frustration, and that's the, the difficulty with getting calls, and you find that something as simple as making sure that they were eating and drinking has been neglected. Give us some tips. We got to close this out. We've yeah. told everybody what to look for. So give us the tips on how to protect your loved one in a nursing home. There are lots and lots and lots of tips. And I'm not really going to have time to cover all of them. But I will say be very observant. We'll pick up on this. We'll, we'll take over. So since we're getting short on time, why don't you put this on the blog? Yeah, well, we, we can do that. Do that. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Okay. We can look for some tips about uh, correct about, and I think I already have a blog. In fact, I'm sure I do have a blog already that addresses some tips about um, uh, about how to spot uh, abuse and neglect. But I also have another blog too about why elderly people don't really say anything. Mm. And, and I know we've into, talked about that, but hearing it, it's it, it again. This is happening to all of us, every single one, whether it's our parents or whether we're getting close to. I mean, this is relevant to everyone. Yeah, not to steal the thunder, but think about this: they 
your mom, your dad, your elderly family member, in their mind, they may think they're causing a problem. Oh, I don't want to be mm-hmm. trouble. I don't want to make anybody have to go out of their way to take care of me. And a lot of people that call me will say, well, mom or dad didn't tell us because they thought it was going to be a problem, something we were going to have to deal with. And they can't defend themselves. So they'll go through the abuse, and and unfortunately it can lead to some very serious injuries simply because they just didn't want to put anybody out to have to worry about them. I think it would be most recognized if you see a bruise. As as the loved one, if your parent or grandparent or whomever is in the nursing home, that's probably the one that is caught the most because it's physical. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. 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 And, and one last statistic. I, I love statistics. I know you, you know do. That. Go. So 95% of elderly people, 95% of elderly people in care have suffered or <gasps> witnessed neglect. Wow. That's according to the research done by the National Center of Elder Abuse, the NCE. let that sit with you guys for a minute 95% have either been abused or witnessed firsthand some level of neglect or abuse in a nursing home wow yeah 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 so yeah again what we'll pick up on next podcast we'll we'll kind of go back through some of the things we've talked about but more importantly go deeper into other issues I do want to talk about things to look for in depth I want to talk about why they don't say anything and uh, you know a little bit more about that and and also what to do yeah. Well, that, okay. So I think we have another show. Yes. Yeah, yes, I do. do. This is fantastic right, information. Right. And um, if you still have questions, by all means, please feel free to call my office uh, and I'll be happy to discuss it with you. I've uh, in 25 years now, I've, I've seen and heard lots of things, but also too been able to pursue these claims successfully to address the concerns you may have. And unfortunately, the, the abuse and neglect that the elder people in, in nursing homes have faced. Uh, but call me. My, my office number is 678 678- Two two five zero nine seven zero or four zero four seven 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 hurt. You can catch me on either one of those numbers. If I'm not available, uh, you can speak with my paralegals, and once I am available, I'll call you back and discuss even more at length and in depth what your uh, concern may be and potential claim. You can also go to my website. It's Derek D E R E K. The letter M as in Matthew, Hayes, H-A-Y-S, dot com. So DerekMHayes.com. And then go to my uh, Facebook, my Instagram, that's Law Office of Derek M. Hayes, and even Twitter. And you can follow me there and reach out to me. As always, the initial consultation is free. So Yay. I'm happy to talk to you. That's <laughs> Absolutely. Right. And if I can help you, I'll be more than happy to take on your claim. All right. Well, thank you so much for a fantastic show. Again, we've we've got a lot more to cover, so I can't wait for the next one. Thank you so much for joining us on Injury Insider with Derek Hayes, presented by Status Home Design and the Law Office of Derek M. Hayes. Don't forget that you can enjoy any of our episodes anytime by visiting businessradiox.com, selecting the Gwinnett Studio, and then clicking on Injury Insider with with Derek Hayes. This program is also available on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Until next time for Derek Hayes, I'm Lita Brooks, and you've been listening to Injury Insider on Business Radio X.